All right. So now we got to talk about this new Biden news. Um, so we just got word that the Biden administration is reversing course and clearing way for a new border wall on the southern border. And what they're doing is they have to waive uh, more than a dozen federal laws regarding environmental stuff in order to do this. Um, the Department of Homeland Security announced the plan. And apparently what it, it's about 20 miles or so in Starr County, Texas. It's a particularly high traffic area where you're seeing a lot of migrants come in. And um, he's, he's moving forward with the uh, basically the Trump plan. So I, wow. I have a, a lot of thoughts on this. First yeah. of all, um, there was video going all the way back to like the 1990s when Biden was at some dinner and he was asked about this. And he said, well, you need some sort of like physical barrier at the, you know, at the southern border. Mm. I think that was it was either fencing or physical barrier. He said something. he didn't say wall, but he said like one of those two things. And I remember seeing that at the time of going. OK, like I'll put that in the old memory bank to, yeah. <laughs> to see when this pops up again. And then, look, I'm actually not that surprised by this, particularly because and, you know, I bring this up all the time for a very long time. Uh, Biden's early time in office, he kept in place remain in Mexico. He kept in place Title 42. So these are all like Trump era policies to try to, you know, Title 42 is we have a pandemic. It's a national emergency. You don't get due process. We're going to kick your ass out. Remain in Mexico was the deal that was cut with the Mexican government where it's like you keep them there. Don't let them cross the border to come here. Yeah. So in many ways, this is in the same spirit as how he's been on the border. But now you actually get a situation where they're like, we're going to build about 20 miles of a border wall. So there's a, a, so much stuff to point out. First of all, uh, will the media bring this up and attack Biden in the same way they would attack Trump? <laughs> That's one question. Yeah. I don't think they will, even though they'll spend 17 hours talking about how old Joe Biden is and making it seem like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they'll attack him, but only on the narrow areas they want to attack well, him. And the hypocrisy will go in both directions. And that's because what, it's not like Fox News is going to be like, good job, Joe, you're building that's, the wall. See, that that's the what point we I was want forever. Make, like, Way to go. And go. you kept remaining in Mexico and you're basically doing the Trump policy. Like, they're not. it doesn't matter. what. And that's why Democrats are so stupid, too. Like, Obama did the same thing. He thought if he was, quote unquote, deporter in chief and deported more undocumented immigrants than any other president before him, then he would get credit and they'd be able to craft some, but that didn't happen. And it's the same thing here, like for all the brutality of uh, a lot of the Biden border policies, and usually what these barriers do is they don't really solve the problem. They just make the crossing more brutal and more deadly. And we've certainly seen that with what Texas Governor Greg uh, Abbott has been trying to do. They don't actually solve the problem. But, yeah, they think that by imposing a similar level of heartless, inhumane brutality that they're going to get credit from someone for, you know, for doing it. But it's not the way that it works. Yeah. Well, there's going to be there's some portion of the left, which is very, very comfortable going after Biden. In fact, there's some portion of the left that like literally only goes after Biden mm -hmm. and they do it more than go after Republicans. Yeah. I think that, that they'll have no problem going after him for sure. this yes. and pointing that out. But that's a relatively small uh, faction. I think I still I don't think like resistance liberals. I don't think they'll necessarily they go after Biden for this. Uh, like you said, the media, I, do, I think they'll just not really talk about it that much and certainly won't attack him over it. But then, like you said, on the Republican side, and it drove me crazy when I was reading all these articles that talked about how Title 42 is still in place. Remain in Mexico is still in place. They're deporting colossal numbers of people people. It drove me crazy that, like, in the same weeks, I would hear Ted Cruz say, like, open borders, Biden, like he's opening the borders. And you have all these Republican politicians saying the same thing. And it's like, like you said, they're never going to it doesn't matter what he does. If he said I'm building a border wall on the entire border, they still wouldn't be like, well, we agree on this one. And it's just like like the game is rigged in a very clear way, because like. You know, when Trump pardoned Alice Johnson, we all were honest and was like, that's great. Thank you. You pardoned Alice Johnson. Wonderful. When he did the first step back, we're like, great. This is awesome. Thank you for that. When we learned, hey, he's not, we're not going to be in TPP. It was like, OK, oh, awesome. Awesome. Like we were honest <laughs> about it all. Yeah. But in a way that you just don't see with with Fox News and with these Republican politicians. And that's going to drive me crazy, you know, and if anything, what they'll do is they might use this as a vessel to continue to attack him to be like, so I guess Trump was right. Maybe you need the original in there to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, the the core issue is you have to deal with the reason people are coming with to start with. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our brutal sanctions policy, uh, which remains in place, has not helped. That's a major exacerbating factor, although it's certainly not the only factor. War on drugs, another massive factor. 
that drives, you know, both poverty and violence and causes people to want to flee their home countries, which is not an easy or pleasant thing to do and requires a lot of, you know, grave uh, danger and risk to those who are involved. So that's the most important piece is like stemming the cause of the climate crisis, also a huge contributor at this point in terms of, you know, drought and other extreme events making life unlivable and decimating the, the lives of farmers, et cetera. But that's obviously long and difficult and, you know, takes a lot. One of the fixes that should be a no-brainer is um, part of what happens is because there's such a massive backlog in terms of our immigration system and having these ca asylum cases adjudicated where, you know, you decide whether this person is a legitimate, like, asyl asylum seeker or not. There's such a backlog because we don't have nearly enough judges. I mean, that should be something that that would be a way more positive, way more humane, way more in compliance with, like, international law and our own law. To, to surge the number of judges, try to reduce that backlog. But instead, I feel like there's just this theater of brutality where it's like, oh, I have to be seen as being tough on this issue and trying to really go after these immigrants instead of actually dealing with um, with the underlying issues. Abs almost no one in the media is honest about the dynamics, whether they're covering for Biden or whether they're lying about what Biden is doing, et cetera. So it's very easy to criticize what's going on at the border, which is a genuine humanitarian catastrophe. There's no doubt about it. Much more difficult for anyone to to really, you know, care about solutions that are going to be um, reasonable and humane for the the human beings who are, are struggling and are involved in this. Yeah. So to your point, to, to put the cherry on top here, what are the actual solutions? That's the question. Yeah. You just laid them out. And the war on drugs, that's super important. Mm -hmm. If you basically put the cartels out of business, there's less of a reason for people to flee from cartel violence. Yeah. So if you legalize tax and regulate drugs, that helps us get closer to that. And the vicious sanctions that we have against various countries to the south of us. I mean, we know for sure that Venezuela, for example, a lot of people are fleeing because of, you know, the economy there and because of the, the tremendous sanctions that we've had against them for a very long time. And also our attempt to like coup Venezuela, which we did under Trump, which we sort of regularly have done. If you stop doing all that, that'll also help. Send an army of judges to the southern border. We need to, like, quadruple or quintuple the number, the number of judges to deal with it. Expedite the process after you have all those judges in place. Have some better facilities. And then be very clear. Have a humanitarian set of rules. Hey, here's the process. If you want to try to get asylum, you're going to get a hearing. It's going to be quick, but we're going to determine. If you don't meet the bar, yes, you'll be sent back. If you do, okay, welcome. But have a very clear humanitarian set of rules that are enforced that's the actual solution right. but it's not it's not sexy right it's also it's really nuanced and detailed and complex and it's not sexy so all you're going to get is you know conservatives who are like build even more of a wall and do the buoys in the in the river with freaking barbed wire and buzz saws attached to it which yeah, is what we horrible. saw not that long ago from yeah. governor abbott so uh it's a real shame and this uh, plan from Biden is a lose-lose because there will be some people on the left and some liberals who attack him over it, although most of them will stay silent. And it's not like any Republicans are going to give you credit for this anyway. And just morally, as a policy, it's just it's dumb anyway. Yeah, I yeah. agree with all of that.